I played my first song in church when I was four, and the song was called Call Him Up. And for some of you church drummers know, the song is, If you confess the Lord, call him up. <laughs> so it was like four on the floor. And when you can do this feel, you were something. And I did that feel at four. I was something. Like probably a lot of you guys, you know, I was beating on my mom's furniture and her couch. Well, I grew up, you know, we try to live all flashy and classy, so you get a white couch, but put plastic over it so don't nobody get it dirty. So the plastic on the couch made a great snare. So I just beat the crap out of the plastic on the couch, and I uh, used lampshades for my cymbals and uh, pots and pans and stuff, you know. It was a gift. It was a God-given gift. If God gives you a gift, you need to try to find the best way you can to cultivate the gift. I knew early on that I was supposed to be playing drums. And that's all I wanted to do. I would ditch school to play drums. I would not go with my girlfriend to play drums. I would, you know, tell my mom I was doing something else and go play drums. I was chosen to play drum. From then on, I, I started playing, um, you know, I got around town in Chicago and playing for different choirs and different things like that. Honestly, I can't really say that I had anybody that I really looked up to. I was just playing, and God was just giving it to me, and I was playing. You know, uh, it wasn't until I became a teenager, like 14, 15, I, I met a guy named Oscar Seaton, and he turned me on to, like, a lot of different styles of music, and that's why I got into jazz. That's why I got into, you know, different time signature. That's when I got in the double bass pedal and I was playing double bass pedal at church wearing everybody out because every time they shouted, I wanted to It was not needed, but I loved it. I got to LA about maybe 11 years ago. I wanted to move out here because I, this is where I heard, you know, this is where it's at. You gotta move to LA if you wanna, you wanna make it. Well, I played with a band called Dakota Moon. That was kind of my first thing in LA. Then I got uh, turned on to uh, Keep Sweat by my cousin. So I did a, a, a tour, a group called LSG. It was Gerald Levert, Keep Sweat, and Johnny Gill. It was like my first R&B group. I wasn't quite living here yet, so since they rehearsed here in LA, that was my opportunity to actually move. So I called my mom and said, put my drums and my clothes in my little truck and ship it. But then I met Ricky Minor and we started, uh, I worked on a show called Motown Live, and that was my first show, my first LA-based show. I couldn't read music, I didn't know how to read music. I'd never seen a chart before. I got to SIR, which, where, uh, which is where the rehearsal was, and on the stands, there was, you know, like this, these charts. So, I'm sitting there setting my stuff up, like, oh man, charts, Phew, okay. So, uh, so I asked, I said, you, uh, you guys got the music? Can you, can you play just something real quick while, while I set up? You know, while, you know, so I can hear what's going on. And being from church, I could hear something one time and play it back. Like that was just another gift that I was given. I could hear it one, literally. I don't care if it was accents and time signatures changed, I could hear it and play it. So he's like, all right, you ready? I'm like, ready, cool, count it off. So I count it off, I'm looking at the chart like, you know, he, he came over to me during a break, he said, man, uh, I know you can't read me. I was like, you knew that? I thought I was faking you out. You know, he was like, no, no, you weren't faking me out. I, I know you can't read. He said, man, I got you here because I like the way you feel. I love what you do. So just relax and just play, man. So I did that. I got to do other gigs. We did a gig called Celebration of Black Music. It was like 17 songs. They started making changes and edits to the chart right an hour or two before the show started. He's like, take out bars 42 through 52. And, and I'm looking at like, I don't know what none of that means, but I, okay. And he walked over to me after it was all over. He said, um, man, I, I, don't, I don't know how you do it. And he walked away. <laughs> so I'm like, was that a diss? So I took it as a diss. So I learned how to read. I taught myself how to read music on the job training. He let me learn how to read on his gig. So I really 
admonish all of you guys if you want to go to that next plateau in your career, learn how to read music.